I hate regular people. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I I hate some like regular press. You know, just those generic questions that you have to answer. And we're on. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Last Week Liquid Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of sitting down with Jeff and Jonathan, better known as Echo and Sidetrack. Jeff and Jonathan are two drum and bass DJs and producers from Perth, Australia, which releases across the likes of Liquidity and Viper Recordings. They also host their own podcast, A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack, where they discuss everything from productivity to roller coasters, aliens, and social media. You can catch their latest release, I Feel Your Love, out now on all platforms. Jeff, Jonathan, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hello. Very good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having that us. That was a fantastic introduction. <laughs> I don't think we've I don't think we've ever had our like bio read so like eloquently yeah. and okay. succinctly. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, did, that was I, lovely. Did, did I miss out on anything? <laughs> no, you covered you covered it perfectly. I think sometimes our bio feels a bit waffly. That was very succinct. We, I might cut that audio and then <laughs> rearrange it for 2022's bio. Be, be, feel free to use it. Yeah, I, do, I, I just like giving a little intro to my for my guests because I, I, I try to recently I've been trying to get guests from different parts of the drum and bass world because uh, yep. I've been getting a lot of like liquid producers and I like to just introduce a bit for people who might not have heard of you. So. Um, yep. Yeah, Perfect. how are you guys doing? How was your your trip in the cabin? I saw that on, on social media. Yeah, so we um, took 10 days uh, off and just went on a big writing adventure and we converted an Airbnb into a studio and moved our whole studio. Our studio is a bit empty at the moment because we're still moving back in. But we converted a yeah, Airbnb into a studio and just went down and was creative for 10 days. Yeah, it was... I kind of keep saying the same thing when people ask me, but I, I, it was so lovely to not have anything to think about apart from creativity. Like we've in Australia, we've kind of started to deal with COVID because we haven't really, because our borders have been closed. Um, so we've had to deal with some show cancellations, some tour cancellations, uh, up and down having to kind of have COVID start to impact our life. And I think the writing trip was just forgetting about COVID, forgetting about other stuff we had going on here. And it was just about making music, feeling emotions and making music. And it's something we've wanted to do for a while. I think actually the first, like romantically, we've both, we've both talked about writing getaways, but I think hearing uh, Woody Etherwood tell us about his trip to Finland. Yeah, I was just thinking about album. that. Yeah. yeah, I think he we we caught up with him in 2017, 2018, maybe 2018 before Liquidity. Yeah, yeah, and um, he was telling us all about it, and I think from that point, it kind of cemented in our minds that we wanted to spend an long uh, elongated period of time just with each other, writing music whether it's for an album project or whether it's for anything. Um, and it really exceeded expectations, I think, for both of us. Yeah. Was there any, like, uh, like added pressure of, like, okay, we've booked this place, we're moving our studio there, <laughs> they, like, something good better come out of it? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit at the start. Like, we um, we pulled up probably about seven o'clock at night and we opened the door of the Airbnb, which is, you can check out on our Instagram, but it's like a, an A-frame cabin. And we kind of opened the door and it was very, very unstudio like. We were like, oh, this place is smaller than I thought. Yeah. Like, oh, shout out to the wide angle lens on the photo. It's <laughs> like, this, um, oh, okay, ah, all right. And then we like went upstairs and checked out the bedroom and we're like, okay, let's, all right, all right. And then we just started bringing everything in and setting up kind of a studio and seeing what would work. But then the next morning we kind of got up and we're like, well, here it is. Uh, whew. But then I think we had a bit of a conversation about removing expectations because that becomes the biggest enemy of anything good. When you, when you run a write something that's so amazing or you, you feel that you've invested all this money and 
staying there or time in moving the whole studio or something. That's that's a surefire way just to cripple you creatively. Mm. Yeah. So we just started like we we did. We developed a bit of a routine and just just kind of got into it with some jams on some um, outboard gear, and we just let the creative juices kind of flow and yeah luckily enough we tr- uh, didn't really get any roadblocks for the first five or six days and i think like you, you really just have to i think maybe there was a comment or joke between us on on the morning on the sunday morning the first day of being like well this better be worth it or like this better be good <laughs> in a kind of throwaway way to alleviate some of the pressure but you you know, you, you get a cup of coffee, you sit down and you just start working. And I think the only way through that possible blockage of expectation is to work and you just start, you just start, you don't you try not to judge. You don't think it's, uh, this is shit. And therefore thinking that you are shit or try to think, uh, try to write with a goal in mind. I think for us, it's really important just to just to start, just start somewhere, whether it's chords, whether it's the sound and just try to let go. And I think we did really well with doing that. Yeah. Like Jeff said, for the first five days. And then I believe day six, both of us were pretty tired and like worn out creatively and both spent about five hours on two separate tunes. And at the end of that five hours, we looked at each other and we're like, this is sh- this is a crap song. Like I think we should just kind of chill out tonight. <laughs> but it, and, and that had been great because that means like we'd done five great days of work. Yeah. And then you had literally hit a bit of that wall. And at first, the initial thought is that like, no, I must keep going forward. And then you're like, no, I've done I've, we've we've done great work. Yeah. Mm. It's okay. Let's just relax and like, you know, we actually just went for a walk and then um, yeah, we just did a bunch of other stuff. Like made some food, watched a movie. Drank some wine. Drank some wine. It's just like, because yeah, that whole celebrating your wins and being like, we have done enough. Mm. And then even the next day, I feel like it wasn't very, really coming very easily. Um, Jonathan was onto something good, but I couldn't find a groove. So I did something else. But then, you know, later that night we found another groove. Like it's, it became less, um, it's the word, like, I suppose the, it was very relaxed. So whenever you were going to come back to work, it was, it was always going to be there. Like the studio was set up in the middle of the house, essentially this tiny mm. house. So the music was ever present. Like if someone was working on music, you could be in the kitchen making breakfast or dinner or something or out on the balcony feeding a wild bird um, as just because we're in nature and you just be hearing little bits of music and you're like, Oh, that mm. sounds cool. Do that. And also you could just be like, I know this, the music's in good hands. I'm going to go and read a book. Yeah. yeah. I think as, as, as well in your mind, when you, you know, as I said before, we've been talking about doing like a writing retreat and we're both quite romantic when it comes to, and have high expectations when it comes to stuff like this. And I think after five, six days, the reality of the situation just sets in and it's like, oh, no matter what, what my surroundings is, even if I'm in this epic studio, that's kind of like half in the trees and there's no one to bother me. And I don't have to think about work or family or partners or any other stress. I, I still, you still have bad days. You're still only Mm. human and you're still only human and, and that's okay. And I think coming back to our studio in Perth, I think that will kind of permeate into how we work. So Mm. when we're not having a great day, we won't feel so, um, judgmental and kind of make ourselves feel bad. Uh, if that's happening, because it, it is like, we, like all producers, I'm sure can get quite frustrated when you have a couple of bad days in in a row in the studio and you're like, ah, I can't get Mm. this thing right. And now I've got to work for two days or now I'm, uh, I've got other stuff to do. I've got life to lead and I'm not coming back for a day or. But sometimes you need that day to go away. Like that's, 
the, yeah, you need that space. The joy is in the return. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and then it comes so quickly. But if you had have sat here and just like tried to brute force it, it wouldn't have been as good. Yeah, but that's a, such a hard thing to like overcome. Oh, it, so hard. And I, I, I'm always like astonished to hear more, I guess, accomplished producers talk about the same thing because. I'm much more earlier in, in, in my production journey. And that's one of the things I struggle with is just being pissed off at myself after 10 minutes in my DAW because nothing good is happening. And I feel like shit. I'm like, fuck this, nothing's happening. And I, I have a lot of other stuff going on in my life. So it's not that I mm. can sit in front of my computer to make music all day. And then it's like, shit, I just wasted two hours doing nothing. And then you feel bad about yourself and it's no, like, I, th <laughs> I, th I think it's important to realize that it's not time wasted because yeah. you have to have two hours of not having ideas to allow the five minutes to happen when you did have the idea. Yeah. So if you think of that time rather than wasted time, think of it as just a longer journey to the eventual goal of having a good idea or writing some drums that are good or writing a hook or writing a chord progression or finding a sample. There's probably always something that comes from it. And even if nothing, then you've just been like in the room preparing for noises to potentially come. Mm. We have a kind of a saying in this, in the studio, cause we used to kind of, uh, work shorter shorter amounts of time um and then we were chatting to our friend shock one he's in the studio downstairs and he had stayed really late one night and had this great moment we were explaining like yeah i just we just couldn't find the groove because we were in there for five hours yesterday and four hours the day before and he goes you can't expect to have a 10 hour breakthrough oh sorry a breakthrough at 10 hours if you don't work 10 hours and mm. it's not that you've done 10 hours of great work it's that you've done 10 hours of sorting through all the bricks and then you find the final one and you go that's why i've been digging for yeah. 10 hours mm. but you never would have found it yeah and then on the other side of the coin sometimes you write something in 30 minutes on your laptop and you're like this is sick yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's that's that that's the thing because i've on my small scale, I've had that sometimes where after 30 minutes, I felt like I had a nice groove going on and uh, like, oh, d like this is cool. So once it's happened once, when it doesn't happen again and you're slaving away for like two, three hours, you're like, fuck this. Because you know it can happen, but obviously yeah. it shouldn't happen all the time. So that's the struggle. But I think as well, um, often we'll find that a good idea will come quite quickly quickly you know probably in the first hour like you'll have you know the drums might be something you've used in another song and maybe you've used those bass sounds but you found these chords or this little vocal chop or something and you've built like an idea and you've got a really shitty first draft but that that's exciting and you mm. did that in the first hour you could spend the next eight hours working on the song but really it doesn't it may not get any more exciting than that first hour mm. but if you don't you know, often you don't catch a tune in that hour, but the really good ones come together quickly to start with. Obviously, they take hours and hours to fine tune and everything. Yeah. But sometimes you just find something and it just it just works. Yeah. Yeah. That's the I, part I, I, that... I, sorry, go ahead. I, I was, I was going to say, like, that's... I think that is one element that s allows more accomplished producers to be more accomplished. Like you think about the people that are best, the best producers in drum and bass and really in music in general, it's the people that treat production and have the ability to, because they're either making money from it or they have the time, uh, to do it, um, every single day for eight hours. I think, I think it's a Wilkinson quote that someone asked him, how long does it take to write a, like a hit tune? And he said, uh, nine to five, Monday to Friday for about three months. <laughs> you should say it in yeah. his voice. Nine to five, <laughs> every five days, about three months. Not bad. Shout out, shout out to Wilco. Love the new album. <laughs> we're, we're big into drum and bass uh, impressions. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> is, is, is that the best one or <laughs> uh we who else do we do uh, i'm trying to think of those a, a couple of years ago uh we were we record we were recording like a little we call them stingers but that's not what they're called are they like little like um uh, radio like a radio thing yeah like yeah. you know hey this is echo and sidetrack you're listening to this yeah yeah, yeah, radio, like, yeah, yeah yeah we we were doing that for um skank and bass their radio show on represents and we just did a bunch like in different people's voices like i think we did one by in fred v and graphics's voice one in dimensions voice one in scientific scientific's voice brooks brothers, brooks brothers. Talking yeah. about uh, yeah. Woody, he he'd be a good one to do a, like an impression of. Cause he has quite a strong British accent. He does have. I need to hear. I haven't Woody heard speak sweet Woody's voice for a long time. It starts off. It's kind of like this. Yeah. It's kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Oh no, that maybe that's too. It's a bit too off with the fairies. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like. Ho- that. Hopefully, no one doesn't enjoy us doing impressions of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. All, uh, obviously this is all in good spirit you're you're all <laughs> friends with these people yes <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're, did, yeah we only we, do it because we're fans of them yeah just, just, just to stay like, the enjoy others. yeah we enjoy making jokes and also because we've got such ridiculous accents ourselves when we hear a british accent we go oh i can do a good impression of that and then they come back and go oh g'day mate oh, i sound like egg on and you're like that's not what i sound like <laughs> but kind then of. it kind of is <laughs> it, kind of, it is. kind of is what we sound like because i'm sure i'm sure you know wilco would hear that and be like that's not what i sound like and it's kind of not yeah. i think i think an impression is is almost like a a caricatured version of the real thing true unless you're like a a method voice actor artist or a voice yeah, artist yeah, yeah, yeah. can just like nail things we're definitely it, not to that up to that level <laughs> is there a big uh, difference in accents in australia i've never thought about this i guess there is but oh uh a little bit um there's probably parts of australia that have emphasis on different words yeah um if i was in queensland probably you could hear someone who's a real queenslander okay because they say a few words differently um our australian accent's pretty neutral i yeah. don't think we, we have uh most people in perth i think are pr- pretty yeah neutral. It, yeah but especially and, us cause... but then it, it ranges from you know uh eloquent well-spoken variation on british english mm. and then with an australian accent to pretty like you know whatever yeah. don't worry about it well yeah just a bit more casual <laughs> it just gets very bloody casual but even if you're yeah. talking the queen's english it's still a bit bitey and sharp <laughs> that's kind of more of a queensland accent oh, in the the Qu- where's queensland what what city is uh um brisbane's in queensland so it's okay. on the um on the east the, the right. north the north of the east coast and okay. so we're on the west coast yeah um but no not not the same way the british have yeah. like you know manchester liverpool yeah the northerners, the it's, southerners, it's, the... it's crazy because the distance is a lot smaller between cities in in the mm. uk but the difference in accents is like massive even in ireland like between dublin and west coast or if you go down south it's completely different and even you 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 would hear too but like yeah i don't know in australia that, that you wouldn't get such a huge difference in accents even though it's like 10 times the size <laughs> or 20 and I think, times. I think there's just also, there's less of us. We've been here a shorter amount of time. Oh, and yeah, we all true, kind true. of, yeah, came yes. from the same British ancestry, essentially. L- yeah, less no, history. That's I guess completely so. wrong. <laughs> no, but I guess yeah. H- history with that coincide. <laughs> <laughs> the history of Australia. No, but there's been, there's been in terms of like not, not getting to like, uh, like natives and all that but when the the british came over to australia that mm. just means that the accent developed for less time than in ireland for example where it's been for, yeah. for centuries and centuries and centuries yeah. so absolutely i'm going off vibes yeah. here i have no idea if this is actually true but... <laughs> no no that makes that <laughs> sounds that makes good sense. <laughs> we are we love throwing out a fact in, yeah. what, in our podcast that's like 
we should Google that. Oh, we could not. We could just let it let pretend, us go. Out. Someone else will come back. To us. Yeah. Someone else can correct us. <laughs> so, j- just closing up on the like cabin experience. That's something I wanted to ask you. Was like, what did were there any like big learnings that you took out out of it? I, I guess the the one thing you mentioned, Jonathan, was a. Uh, like to, it's okay to have bad days and if you're going to have bad days even in the perfect environment you're going to have bad days in everyday life yeah were there any other yeah. like learnings maybe like between the two two of you collaborating or other stuff um i'll give a quick shout out to sonar works <laughs> we'd never used sonar works the software until recently and it's like um monitor correction software you have a little mic and you ping it around the room um it's probably not perfect, but it makes a room that is not made for sound production like quite usable, yeah. particularly in the low end. And so that thing made made the room a, a pleasure to work in. You know, you're not going down there and stem mixing your tunes, but you get a vibe. Mm. And that just, yeah, changed the game because any thoughts about a non-treated room or, a, you know, different things, it just made all of that go away and you could just get straight to the music and you could just trust movements you know we, we weren't really doing a hell of a lot en- of engineering but you can just trust a volume change or you can trust the low cut eq so much more when you know that's on the master and just correcting uh, a little bit so that's something good we learned uh what else i uh, think, think giving each other space mm, uh mm. I th- we're pretty good at that um over the years we've worked on different configurations of both of us being at the studio, both of us, uh, sitting up at what we call the helm. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that. Uh, <laughs> the ideal listening spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically there is a small throne. Uh, we, we sometimes <laughs> run a toboggan configuration where I would, What's Jeff that? or I would be behind the other one and kind of duck down a little bit. Um, But yeah, so we've kind of, we've changed this around a little bit. So now, uh, sometimes we'll, we'll spend probably more than half the amount of time, the time we spend in a studio in a week, we will be by ourselves. Yeah. It means Mm. you get uh, more time to flesh out your own ideas and not have someone going, Oh, that's good. Keep going there. Or no, 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 no. Do it like this because you need to make those decisions yourself and it it, you've got your own creative flow going and if Mm. someone we've learned that we can respond quite badly to like cutting our own creative flow and going like oh what and like trying to do something else Mm. yeah and we both also work quite differently yeah um just in terms of what we want to what sounds we want to start with what kind of um what order we want to do things in yeah so Mm. i might yeah and often it's six and a half a dozen like it doesn't really matter how you get there and um we both can find it a little, not frustrating but it's like a little bit like hands off to sit there and just listen to the other person work that said sometimes it's fun to play you know producer and just have the and the, just have the other person kind of be an operator mm, yeah and, and if the other as long as the other person's into it otherwise <laughs> It doesn't that work. It doesn't work at all. <laughs> but you hear different stuff when you're not sitting yeah. at that in that yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh yeah, keep actually just loop that bit, man, or like turn and, that up. And I think you're more open to moments like that if you've had some time by yourself. Mm. You know, like if you go, uh, I, I just want to flesh out this idea, give me an hour, and one of us will go downstairs and then come back, and the other one will be like, Oh, well, I, I've got this idea, and then you can start working on it together. Mm. I think it's just about knowing when to give the other one space. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things I would say is not, not judging the work so quickly. Mm. I think it's very easy to get bogged down and kind of what we we're talking about before, like, uh, this is not good. Yeah, stop. Uh, I'm going to stop working on this. Is no good. And, like, and no, like, you're going through something to yeah, get somewhere. And and just knowing, like, if 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 it's not sounding good, keep it as simple as possible. Don't make a something that something that's complicated and doesn't sound good needs to be simplified. 
and that would be an easier way to mm. get through it. It's kind of like coming up against a tight road and then being like, oh, I can, I think I can squeeze in this little gap <laughs> rather than just reversing out. And it might go, you might have to take another road that's the long way around, but it's going to be a lot easier and you'll probably end up yeah. in the same place. Or almost like if you have to do like a, a really tight parking spot and you like turn off the music and close the windows, it's like simplify yep. everything and just focus yes. on this one yep. simple thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And sometimes yeah. we're, we're writing a tune and you kind of go, like, oh, it sounds a bit like this song or, oh, I don't really like those drums or something. And then you just got to remind yourself, this is just a, like we often use the tunnel tunnel analogy, like this is just a tunnel we're traveling through that sounds like that, but where mm. we're going is completely different. But if we stop ourselves now, then we'll never get anywhere. Uh, recently I read that same analogy in a book in Oliver Berkman's 4,000 weeks, he talks about the bus routes. He's like most major cities, the bus routes kind of get to similar places for the first five or six stops. Mm. But then after a while, they go completely different places. If as a creator, if you only ever stay on the first few stops, you'll only ever go to common places, yeah. places other creatives have been. You have to stay on the fucking bus. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's true. Like we have to just write it out. On. Yeah, I think, and sometimes it is writing it out because like, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think. You, yeah, oh, no, so, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say you have to put the chances on your side to actually exactly. write it out and get on the yep. other side of the tunnel, and then judge it. All right, is this worth actually mixing down and arranging and stuff, or? or not <laughs> but exactly. you, yeah. you, you can't do that while you're in the tunnel because no. it's dark right. and you don't see anything like, exactly <laughs> exactly i'm pushing the analogy stretch here. It. yeah <laughs> that's, <good. laughs> that's exactly what we like stretch the analogy as far as it will go it'll come back later in the podcast um i think uh something else is the benefit of not having social media for 10 days yeah that can't be understated like mm -hmm. I mean, social media is so important, especially for musicians uh, and any creatives to try to sell your work or and be hot seen. Girls. And hot girls. Um, but ha not having it there and not having the comparison there feel like it's like clearing a cache in your brain. Mm. Mm. Like your brain has 30% more space because you're not subconsciously thinking about what someone else is doing and that allowed creativity to just be but be much more focused mm. i think sometimes i like jeff and i've spoken about how we feel about making music and sometimes jeff jeff would call me or or message me and say oh, i've got this like idea for this song and it could do this and do this and it's like his brain was thinking about the music in his sleep and he woke up thinking about it. Yeah. And I would, wouldn't would have that as much. I'd be thinking about other things and then I'd get to the studio and start thinking about music. But having time off social media, I actually had those moments of, I'd go to bed thinking about music and I'd wake up and I'd be thinking about the song that we were working on before and... I'd have maybe an idea for it or a plan of attack or something. And I believe that's because I turned off all of my inputs mm. and I had just basically one input, which was where we were, the cabin, Jeff, like there were, and, and I think when we, we started off not using our phones at all. And then a couple of days in, we'd have a conversation, maybe you'd go on WhatsApp and talk to someone send someone a voice note and we we found that even doing that was like a distraction mm. and we had to kind of call call each other on it i think mm. at one point jeff was like put put the phone down like even if it's just talking to someone yeah no so i think everyone should try to have breaks from social media and just try and have some like just less inputs yeah because you're constantly distracting yourself you're like yeah. you know the classic thing is like bouncing a section of a tune 
it takes eight seconds yeah. or whatever, but you're just like, oh, go look at Instagram. Already you just break the flow. Yeah. Just yeah. sit just sit there and be like, huh, have That's, a book. Yeah. If you want to, it'll probably, guess what? You open the book and you're like, oh, it's 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 done. Or, well, think you know, about this. Just stop filling the, the empty spaces if, with inputs. If you don't fill those spaces with random inputs, the space will fill itself with, with ideas. the thing that you're focusing on. Yeah, yeah, with ideas. And so if you're bouncing out a section of a song, maybe you're thinking about how you can change the arrangement up or... Yeah. How are you going to process it or stuff that really matters rather than, at least for my brain, what I usually come away from social media feeling is, oh, I wish I was doing something fun or I wish I was better at doing X or I wish I had a song that sounded like Y or why aren't I as good as that person or like it's all judgment stuff. Mm maybe like one out of 10 or one out of eight things is something that inspires me. But a lot of it's just like subconscious and reactive judgment stuff. It's not like I I sit and soak in the judgment. It's just like there. Subconsciously, it's kind of building up and building up. Yeah, yeah, it's just right there. And then that makes the moments where you feel like you're not doing good work on the computer. Suddenly all those judgments are so loud in your head and you go, mm. oh, I want to feel better. How do I feel better? I'll look, I'll look back on my phone. And you go back to, it's like drinking, drinking the poison bottle that you think is going to rejuvenate your thirst, but it's actually the thing that's killing you in the first place. Yeah. We also had an experience where we hadn't heard any finished music for a few days. We'd just been working like on our tunes. Oh, yeah. And then we heard some finished music. We got a, a bunch of promos and we thought we'd listen to them. <laughs> Bad it, was, it was actually that was, it was, a, it was was actually the new like the new Wilkinson album. Oh shit! Yeah. And, it's and you were like, uh, and, and literally, I don't yeah. think. I, I, imagine this. Uh, fuck. And, and then you turn on the out. You play our demo, and you're just like, yeah. yeah. It's just a classic like comparison, like a mixed, finished, master tune versus your. Yeah day one demo yeah, yeah. are never going to be equal, and but your ears had got used to being like a bit sloppy and all of a sudden you got this very direct hit and it was yeah. like, ah. But it's, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's a tricky one because sometimes I, I like to reference tracks in terms of like inspiration as well. Like for example, I was wor- like a few years ago working with vocals and I really liked how the harmonies worked on a, I think it was a track from... I forget Adele or somebody else, like a pop pop tune, like what the harmonies were doing in the pre-chorus or something. And I wanted to just like copy it for for the session I was working on. And you you yeah, you end up comparing your shitty like sketch <laughs> sixteen bar loop with a professionally engineered mixed tune. Even though yeah. sometimes it's good for inspiration, but it's like yeah, double edged sword of like let's 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 like consider this for what it is like this is a professional yeah. tune this is a demo and keep keep them separate but it's hard i th- i think you just have to remind yourself and we're pretty lucky that we have each other so if one of us gets in a little down on a tune or down on a idea or feels like we're not making something that sounds as good as a finished wilkinson tune the other one can say that and can be like bring the bring them back into reality a bit more yeah but if i imagine that kind of thing would be a lot harder when producing by yourself because it's just you in a in a room and if you start to feel shit about the work you've done and i think as well at that we use reference tunes a lot as well yeah and i think we've gotten better over the years at recognizing not listening to the mix so much as listening to different elements Mm. you know you know that your tune is going to be (coughs) as compressed as neat your drums are going to be as tight like things like that but you're looking for different parts of the song i think what got us when we were um down in denmark was that we had just just been writing demos that were very very loose and then all of a sudden hearing something so polished you're like oh uh, we're way off yeah. Like we're so far away because, you know, when you listen to something on a loop all day and like you start arranging something, you're like, 
this is a vibe and you know it's loud enough it's you got a limiter and some compression on the mask so you're doing some things you know like, this is cool and then you you know you do that a b and you're like oh yeah but even you know we we're, some of the drums we were using when we were down south were just a break and a, a disco kick and a random snare like no punch to them no nothing but they mm. carried the tune because it's one of the things we wanted to concentrate on we wanted to write try to write and work on arrangements and pre-choruses and doing interesting things and we know we can come back up here and you know put in punchy drums punchy drums engineer are easy it. to do we can engineer it later we just want yeah, to yeah. get vibe you're not going but to even, cabin to like eq a snare no no, no way <laughs> but but even in knowing that, there was still that reaction of being like, our drums sound shit. And you'd be like, yeah, but they're not, they're not even good drums. Like, you know they're not good drums. You said they're not you good drums. You use shit drums. We said you use shit drums. And then you're like, yeah, but they don't sound as good as Wilkinson. What, what, what are we doing? And, like, you Obviously. can still get in that. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's so funny how the brain just yeah. um, can kind of, I don't know. Plays tricks on you. Comparison, man. Yeah, it's comparison. Yeah, yeah which is which which comes back comes comes back to the social media part where, like, I don't know what, what what's kind of your relation with social media because I feel you're quite present and you like making content, quote unquote, and videos and and stuff like that. And but at the same time, uh, when I hear you talking on your podcast about like the dangers of social media and stuff like that, you seem very conscious as well of of it. So. What's kind of your relation yeah. with, with social media? I think I think we are conscious of it and anything we make that's like, you know, like you said, content in inverted commas is because we're naturally doing that kind of thing. Um, yeah, let's make a video about this funny thing or like, oh, we should film this. Um, so it comes pretty naturally and easy, easily. It gets a bit stressful when you start feeling like you have to perform for the the followers like oh we need to you know we've all been guilty of thinking we need to make a post to keep our we haven't made a post in five days quick what's the post yeah or yeah. Like, do something oh, funny have, have we made enough noise about this sing, um, yeah. single or things like that like but really if like good good noise uh good content good things to say that mean something will always cut through because they actually mean something to someone on the other side if we just mm. post like flashy images it's just like cheap food it's just sugary food that satisfies but it means nothing um so i suppose we're trying to be more conscious of uh, one how we use it but also uh use it as users um absorbing it yeah. uh, but also how we the stuff we provide like we kind of don't want to be just people that provide true content. But that said, you can listen to our podcast anytime. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. And, and like, but smash the like button. Of, yeah, smash, yeah, the, smash like. the like button. <laughs> it is this kind of this double-edged sword because we are creatives and have ideas for content. And do want to make more content and know that that's one of our strengths. I fucking hate the C word. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that, that's what it is. It's, it's I, yeah, it is. exactly. It is. <laughs> and, and like, and you know, in in some way, we want to we want to do more of it. But in the other way, we have so much disdain for the fact that we have to do it. And this is a conversation that we often have together, or we often have with uh, Carl Shockwan. And we always come back to the end goal of like, or the end conclusion of you have to play the game mm. to a certain extent and the game has the potential to be quite fun. So yep. it's all about balance. So if that means you do a funny video every month, then that's good. But you mm. kind of, you, you, come to a, you come to an arrangement with yourself of what you're going to do and what you can do and stick with that and be consistent and also don't let it take away from the thing you're there to do yeah like there's a bunch of people that are extremely successful content creators and then you go what do they what do they do oh they that's that guy that talks about music and he gives music tips and he has millions of followers on youtube and stuff 
And then you go, does he make music? Oh, he does, but it's not very good yeah. because he doesn't spend time making the music. He's he spends actually, time making content. He spends time making content. <laughs> yeah. And if that generates him millions of dollars a year, then hats off to you because I don't make millions of dollars a year from my music, but I'd prefer to make music yeah. and have any content we make supplement byproduct. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Supplement. Yeah. Perfect word. <laughs> I, I think the, the pulling back from social media as a user, I think is, will help all that. Mm. And just, just kind of, uh, what was I saying? Post and ghost. Mm. Post and ghost. Yeah. yeah so you yeah. post something, you, you, you have your plan of what you're going to talk about, what you're going to post in that week or that month, or whatever, download Instagram, post it, reply to some people, then leave it Yeah. and delete the app. And like start u- using it as a utility rather than using it as a, a place where you go in your brain. Yeah. Because it's, it's funny. You look at um, a lot of, you know, not just in drum and bass, but in the wider music community at some people, a lot of people would have people managing their social media. Mm. But um, I saw recently on Twitter, everyone started getting excited because Skrillex had made his first tweet in like three months. Okay. And it's like, yeah, because Skrillex isn't on fucking Twitter having some like <laughs> fight with this person about X, Y, Z or yeah, talking about vaccines or it, talking about anything. He gets in, he promotes something or he's like has something that he actually genuinely means and then he gets back to work, gets yeah. back to work yeah, because yeah. that's what it is. Because if you, if you want to be really, 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 really good at something, don't distract yourself with something else. Otherwise, you're going to get really, really, really good at being distracted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no, there's no distraction Olympics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be really good at that. Like the, yeah. the eight second rendering stems and checking three <laughs> stories that hit home, like hard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really hard. <laughs> it's because that, that's also the thing with like social media is there, there's this push towards productivity of like, yeah, you have to be productive and obviously sleep is important, but then you have what a, however many 16 hours, whatever, where you're awake and you have to be productive. And sometimes we feel like we need to optimize every single minute of our day. Oh, and, and, and that's, that's like really hard to get out of, of when you said like not filling those eight seconds with, with something, with some sort of input. It's like, yeah, just rest. It's fine. <laughs> you need to, you need to read this book. It's called 4,000 Weeks by Oliver Berkman. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I listened to the podcast. It's on my list. Oh, <laughs> oh man. It's so good. It's such a great um, view on productivity and just time in general. Mm. And it, it allows you to just view things with a little bit more space and go, productivity is not filling your all of your time with everything is no way to happiness No, because you just start you just get better i think he says as you get better at being more productive you just think you can add more stuff in yeah. and then you'll never have that space that you've dreamed of to be able to relax yeah um but yeah it's a, it's a really it's a really good book that um has spoke to both of us recently i, I think that hustle mentality as well that you see uh, it kind of gets caught up in like the work hard mentality. Yeah, of course it's really good to work hard and to hustle and to be like concentrating grinding. on your work and grinding, grinding, <laughs> grinding for content. Hit the like button. <laughs> but, hashtag grind, hashtag celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, if you're grinding at the sake of, your sleep or your relationships or your personal time or your relationship with yourself or how much water you drink or, or whatever it is, then it's not worth it. And mm. I think, uh, balance. Yeah, it is about balance. And, and then that's one thing about social media that like a good mix, a lot of, you sometimes see it from people, but a lot of people give off the air that they're working every single day. And for, 15 hours a day and they're hustling and they're heavily invested in cryptocurrency and F- NFTs and music and also stocks. And they're also a real estate agent and something else. And they're a fucking content creator. But, but 
<laughs> they do all one, all one of those things, you know, twice a, twice a week or something. But they're just they've got great social yeah. media presence. So he gives the perception of an unrealistic mm. expectation of productivity, which is crazy because that's that that's desirable. Like I want to be like someone who never sleeps, and if I want to get ahead, I I have to do it's all these capitalism. things. It is capitalism. It's capitalism condensed for young idealistic people that yeah. want to be successful. If you want to work as hard as me, a good factory worker, work even harder in your own factory. Yeah. It's <laughs> a great yeah, that's a great advice. I th I think the hard part also with being like an artistic person in the uh capitalist, I guess, model is that you can you can always do more to promote like the, you yeah. can always do one more video and one more instagram yeah. post and maybe this is the video that's going to really go viral maybe this is the piece yeah. of content people are going to resonate with and it's like when does that stop it's like <laughs> and I, I think that only leads that only stops i believe when you get burnt out and when you mm. see that you've had that mentality on every post or every the same thing happens with music or with gigs or with with anything it's like oh this is going to be the one this is going to be the one to change everything no it's, it's it wasn't that one but it's this one this is the song that's going to break it mm. this is the email decision that i'm making to say yes to something that's going to be the decision mm. no they're all just tiny decisions that slowly inching your way towards death <laughs> And even it's and not before, even this, and before not, death, a, a goal as well. Happy, but it's happiness not, somewhere in there. <laughs> but but even when even when you move towards that thing, if you're the goalpost is always moving, you never get to a point. Very mm. rarely do people get to a point and they're like, ah, I've I've made made it. Mm. I've made it. Like, <laughs> I can't remember what I can't remember the circumstance, but it happened to us recently in the last three months, where we finished something. And maybe it was for, I feel your love. Like we handed it in and then instantly we started talking about the next thing. Mm. We literally shook, we shook hands. Yeah. I think it was a really, no, we celebrated the win on that a bit more. There but, was something but else. There, but there was we, something that we like, there was the, we struggled with and we're like, it's going to feel so much better when this is done. And then it was done. And then we just went on to the next thing. Mm. Just like, found another challenge. And found the next challenge. And like, you, you've really got to focus on enjoying the journey as much as possible and enjoying the hard times as well as the good times because there, there is really no, you can have goals and there's mm. end goals and there's definitely points you want to hit. But you don't want to rush too quickly to... What is it? Inbox zero. Mm. What does he, he talks about in 4,000 words? Like you get to inbox zero and all that happens is you get more emails. Another email comes in. Another email yeah. will come in. Yeah. It's not like you, like, it, you reach this zen zero. matrix, like he's the one and you just like, <laughs> you never, you can never <laughs> receive an email again. Like yeah. you, you're just going to go up to one and then two, and then you're going to, it starts again. Go, yeah. yeah. And then it starts again. So like, I think just, just, be more aware of the moment and celebrate the wins as much as possible. Yeah. And I mean, that's why we celebrated. I think we celebrated. I feel your love by getting KSC in a bottle of champagne. Yeah. Nice. Cause we read in, um, Dave Grohl's book, which is another really good one. If you uh, I saw that storyteller, is it? Or yeah. Storytellers. Yeah. Uh, if, if you like audiobooks, I'd recommend the audiobook cause he reads it and it's quite great to hear him tell yeah. his story. Um, but uh, he, yeah, he talks about at one point KFC and champagne, and we're like, okay, let's <laughs> let's do it. And we both kind of felt sick the next day. Yeah. But <laughs> but we celebrated a worthy celebration. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I, I, it's it's the most cliche thing ever. But I always say that cliches exist because they're kind of true. It's like it's not about absolutely. Yeah, it's not about the journey, uh, Jesus. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. <laughs> it is, <laughs> and it's about. Because there isn't any destination, really. It's more about the milestones along along the way and celebrating yeah. them. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're absolutely. the things that you remember, the meaningful moments, the doing that allow you to 
do more in the future. You don't ever arrive at one place and be like, I think I'm going to exist here infinitely in time. Yeah. You arrive at one, the, you arrive at your final place and then you die. Like Jonathan yeah. said, it is the whole journey. Yeah. It sounds a bit nihilist, but it's not. It's just a, a very abstract view of looking at things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, like, Obviously, the, the, the concept of the 4,000 weeks from what you said on the podcast was that the average lifespan is 4,000 weeks. So it's yep, a bit of yep. that, like being mindful of death. And then that's how you that's how you end up enjoying life is knowing that you're going to die. So it's not so much nihilism. It's more realism. I don't know how would you call it. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's a bit it's a bit stoic as well. Yes, I think uh, is Marcus Aurelius that said, live every day act and live every day as if it's your last and you'll have a good life mm. or act, something about yeah acting as if it's your, the last day on earth and and how you would be if it's going to be yeah. the last time like everything you do is going to have a last time this mm. might be the last time i speak and have a conversation with jeff yeah or this might be the last time i ever speak to you mm. or this might be the last podcast i'm ever on so it's best to be present and to be focused and to do my best rather than be thinking of what am I going to eat tomorrow for breakfast or next time I'll get it I'll or do it next time on the podcast I'll be better, I'll be better because mm. I'm be more focused because I'm or well, whatever like yeah. it, I think it just puts you in the moment and says <laughs> there is no there is no real future or past it's just kind of now yeah it's the present moment focus on that I heard this awesome quote from a I don't know if you know the comedian Jimmy Carr. He's a yeah, British, uh, pretty pretty edgy. He's in his own bit of controversy at the moment. Uh, but um, he said something on a podcast that was, he said, happiness is enjoying the passage of time. And I thought that yes. was such a, an awesome way of looking at it. It's like, it just yeah. kind of recenters you in, into the present moment. And if you yeah. manage to enjoy the passage of, of time, then you'll have a happy life. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. Exactly. That's mm. all we've got. Jimmy Carr's a smart guy. Yeah. I don't know. Some people might disagree. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to jump back on the... Uh, I'm jumping from topic to topic here, but uh, on the You want to go back into the tunnel, Simon. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> there it's, it a is. it's a tube. Like, <laughs> it's actually a tube. You, it, it's a bus you go into the tunnel as a bus and you come out as a train. <laughs> That's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on, on, just on the audiobooks, cause I, you, you've spoken about audiobooks and I've never tried them. Uh, oh. I, there's something about, because I've, uh, at some stage in my life, I was listening to too many podcasts and I realized <laughs> I was always putting on a podcast and then actually doing something else, thinking about something mm. else. And I was, I'm kind of scared that, that's what would happen if I start listening to audiobooks. So that's why I tried to still read paper books like it's 1950, but like... No, I love a paper <laughs> book as well. I just find some... I, I will go through more books if I get some on audio. Like mm. um, there's a great book called Chaos, which is all about um, the CIA and Charles Manson and stuff like that. Another great book. Um, but it's like, it's a, it's a big it's a beast. It's pretty mm. dense. There's a lot of names. There's a lot of facts. And I found listening to it a bit more like a podcast. Mm, okay. So I was able to almost absorb more. Um, Rather than reading a 1200 page book. Yeah. Which I would have put down and be like, Oh, this is and exhausting. Taking you six months to read. And it, yeah. you know, you're not, I, for, for me, I think I listen to nonfiction audiobooks mm. and read fiction um because it does feel like a podcast it just feels like a podcast with your favorite scientist or philosopher or uh whoever you're interested in i mm. just started actually the um will smith book uh that's also on my list it looks amazing um and he reads it oh and the audiobook yeah mm. and i'm like well this is kind of non-fiction fiction crossover because it's a sto his story and things like that but it does have like you know Mm. takeaways and things like that and i was like oh when do i when am i going to hit a point where i do a piece of fiction and i think i've got i think i've got neil game and sandman in there and i want to do a, a piece of fiction but then 
I like reading fiction. So I completely mm. understand where you're coming from, Simon. And also that classic thing of doing a podcast, or listening to a podcast and doing the dish what, uh, yeah, dishes whatever or something it, like that yeah. is you kind of just absorb it um, ambiently. But yeah. if you're reading a story, I've done it, and then you go, Wait, who the fuck? Who's talking where now? Am I? Like, where am I? <laughs> yeah. And you skip back and you're like, oh, I'm way off. Yeah. It's like the equivalent of reading in bed and then just almost drifting <laughs> off and going, I have not paid attention for the last page. Yeah, exactly. What did I just read? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a but tricky I one. Which, I encourage it. Yeah. Just with like podcasts, is like it kind of gives you the pretense, the impression sometimes that you're productive. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm listening yeah, to this yeah. podcast. I'm listening to, I'm learning something new but you're not, not actually truly listening and engaging with it because you're doing something else and maybe you're answering emails or whatever. And it's like, you're doing everything kind I, of half-baked. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can't do anything uh, too involved while listening to a podcast. Like mm. I have a job where I have some, I work for a coffee company. So I end up bagging a bunch of coffee and that's really repetitive and quite easy and relaxing. So it's like, it's perfect to listen to a podcast. Mm. But as soon as I have to start um, counting orders and doing things, I'd need silence. Mm. Like I, I'm very happy to, if I write, I write in silence. I don't need background noise or anything. But, and I hear people saying, oh, I, I listen to a podcast and I do my, I do my work. Like I'm an accountant or something. And I'm, and I'm like, are you crazy? That's too many inputs, <laughs> man. Like yeah. you, fucking bananas. The thing that gets me is people that turn on the TV to study or to like it's the white noise thing to yeah. do work like I I, I, I I I don't get that i could do classical music and do writing or painting or something but not you yeah. sound like such a <laughs> i spend most of my time what age painting and listening to classical music and drinking brandy and my, my brandy wine. collection is extensive <laughs> And delicious. I'll bring you around sometime, Simon, and we will have a drink, and I will show you my collection of artwork. <laughs> I'd love to. Could not listen. Could not stand listening to anything other than Mozart. <laughs> um, no, but I know. I know exactly what I mean. It's a different kind of white noise, though. Like it's. It's like I can't listen to music with words if I'm writing. Yeah. Mm. I find it distracting. I like put yeah. on something. It's like more ambienty, and dub also the classic dub techno is perfect for that. That's the. Oh. Uh, Whenever I work on something or prepare for a podcast, whatever, I have a go-to like dub techno playlist and it's it's just perfect. It's kind of ambient, it's slower paced, it no no lyrics or anything. Yeah. That that's my go to style of music. I um, actually like listening to albums I know really well as well. And mm. I can just put that album on repeat because yeah. I the lyrics and stuff, that's when I can listen to something with lyrics because it becomes just part of the music because you know it so well. It's when the novelty things come in. Yeah, you're like, yeah. new thing. It's, Ooh, it's that's difficult. cool. Because then I'll start listening to the music and I'll be like, oh, this sounds sick. Yeah. Oh, who yeah. Did? And I'll just go down a rabbit <laughs> hole of who fucking wrote the song, who produced it. And then I'm like, what was I actually doing? And you're oh, on that's Wikipedia. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. that, man, that's one of the things I do love to do is when a new pop album comes out, like when Dua Lipa's album came out, just listen to it and then just do a deep dive on all the writers and, mm. you know, where she recorded it and all sorts of interesting things like that. But yeah, if I was half typing an email to the label, it's still half typed. Yeah. Mm. There's a draft somewhere. It's <laughs> never been <laughs> finished. <laughs> Yeah, my 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 go to my other go to album is uh, Migration by Bonobo. Like I've listened oh, to that yeah. one like a million Amazing. times, and so I just know it off by heart, like just by yep. heart, which means I can almost zone out and actually do something exactly. else. <laughs> but yeah, it still big, feels big album. It still feels like cozy and warm. Because exactly. You know it so well, it's kind of like going home and it's then comforting. Getting into yeah, yeah, very comforting. <laughs> any any very Bonobo comforting. actually, I feel uh, like that. He's brilliant, man. He's a genius. Have you um? He did a podcast with Jamie Liddell. Uh, the podcast is called Hanging with Audio Files. And it's from a few years ago now. Um, but it should still be out there. But he, he sounds like a lovely dude and he talks mm. about his process. And um, I found that extremely interesting because, yeah, I love his music. and I always I have this idea of how he creates it and it's mm. a little bit different to mm. how he actually does. And that is the end of that story. I, yeah, the image I have in mind is like 15 musicians in a room 
with like exotic instruments and he's like recording everything and then sampling and <laughs> that's it's pretty <laughs> that's pretty close it's pretty close <laughs> he'll end up actually he hires a bunch of stuff or hires ah, okay. a session player and just records a shitload and then samples his own stuff yeah ah. and then creates stuff with his own samples that's the way to go yeah mm, smart guy yeah. Guys, uh, I'm gonna slowly let you go. Uh, I don't know what time is it where you are. Must be quite late. Seven nights. So seven, <laughs> seven fifteen at night. We've got hours. We could talk for hours. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I still wanted to touch on on your own podcast because uh, I, I I don't often get to speak to other people who also have their own podcast. Uh, and by podcast, I mean a, a spoken word podcast, which is the true sense of the podcast. But yes, that's it. that's my own little <laughs> pet peeve. <laughs> but um, I agree. No, I agree. I agree. For maybe for people who ha haven't heard your listened to your podcast, a band part, how would you describe it to somebody who hasn't heard it? I would go back to the start of the show and listen to the intro you did, and uh, I think that's pretty perfect. <laughs> no, I, so we we started a podcast in twenty sixteen. I think, and we were interviewing uh, people that would come down to Perth on when they toured. Uh, we spoke to Hybrid Minds, Fred V and Josh Graphics, uh, Shock One Fetster, and then just some conversations with ourselves. Uh, but it wasn't regular enough and we hadn't fitted into our um, our schedule. And it was also long. Like, it was we, long. We very much you know, fans of rogan and things like that so we just wanted to have interesting conversations they end up being like waffly three hour, three hour sometimes you know two hour conversations where yeah interesting things are said but you know it was a mic in the middle of the room and it wasn't very well produced and you know it was an arduous task to in some cases edit things so yeah. they'd only come out once a month and, and you'd have to cut things out because you'd say something or the mm. person you spoke to didn't want that said or it was just quite complicated. So we stopped. Um, and then I think we had talked about starting it up again. Uh, and then in 2020. And then in 2020 when you were in the UK. I was in the UK <coughs> and COVID happened. Uh, we decided to start it up because I'd, we'd gone into lockdown. And I think the first episode was... Yeah, March, probably maybe Feb, end of March, end of March, 2020. And basically the idea behind it is a band apart. We were right. We're writing. We were writing music when I was living in London and Jeff was living in Perth and how, uh, being brothers and being creative and working on the same project, but being separated mm. by 20,000 kilometers how that was affecting us and how the struggles we had and the things that were good. And then we just would talk about, you know, that's, that's what it centers around. But then we just talk about our lives, how we're feeling. The first, a range of topics, probably 15 or 20, like touch on everything from love and um, depression. relationships and depression and stuff. But then always with, you know, this thread of, you know, what have we been up to and stuff mm. like that. It's a conversational <clears throat> podcast and mm. we never really have any planned idea of what we're going to talk about, but we both like having conversations that are a bit more meaningful and having a bit of a deep dive on yeah. a discussion. And, mm. and kind of going into the philosophy of, you know, writing music and what it's like to be creative and the pitfalls and the struggles and the good things and the bad things and... And then, you know, every now and then, uh, we address a bigger topic, like, uh, when the black lives matter movement was starting off in 2020, we spoke to, uh, our friend Jake about his experience as a, um, mixed race guy in London. And, and then we, when, uh, there was a woman in London that got murdered by a police officer sarah everard mm. and we had our friend ruth on and we talked about oh, sexual yeah. assault and a uh, woman's experience uh in the world and so there's occasions where we'll have guests and discuss something that's a bit more specific mm. 
Um, and sometimes we can talk about serious stuff, and sometimes yeah, we just yeah, yeah. talk talk and about Jonathan's dreams. Yeah, we talk about my <laughs> dreams or <laughs> silly stories or <laughs> memories we've had of various things. And it, yeah, it's pretty casual. It goes for about forty five forty five to an hour, and yeah, yeah. I think we sold it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's so it's it's so it's so strange to like to talk about your own podcast because it is Jeff and I and because we are brothers and we work together so closely it feels so much less uh structured structured and yeah. kind of big and sometimes I forget that people even are, like are listening in and it's just a conversation yeah. that Jeff and I would have and it's very personal and we reveal things and come to conclusions and you know it's a real insight into how jeff and i's brain work yeah. and you do forget some some people have come up to me or messaged me and said oh really loved that you guys are so comfortable talking about vulnerability about and about this or it's so amazing that you admitted to this or said this and i'm like huh did i did i can't even remember <laughs> saying that i can't it, believe i said that i probably it, wouldn't have thought about it if you've done like 70 plus episodes Chances are you probably talked about it at some stage. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's it's but it's really good. like I find it quite therapeutic. I was gonna use that word. Yeah, when it's when it's just the two of you talking, especially when you were in remote locations, it felt very like getting stuff off your chest and just like yeah. chatting. Mm -hmm. And then if something interesting comes about and people find it interesting, that's almost like a, a bonus. Like it's more yeah. kind of for yourselves, like talking between each other. But uh, can can I yeah. ask you? Yeah, how yeah. come you you started your podcast? Yeah. Why or what? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how come you started? Uh, because <laughs> basically, because I just wanted to talk with drone based artists that I loved listening to. I I've been a huge fan of podcasts for like years, and. Yep there just wasn't something in drum and bass for the artists that I love listening to more up yeah. and comers and more in the, I guess the liquid scene and I'm expanding a bit more beyond that now, but yeah, it was just something like I'd love to listen to a podcast like this, but it doesn't exist. Yeah. So yeah. fuck it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. You should scratch, your, scratch your own itch. Definitely yeah, yeah. People will come. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's really good, man. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it was nothing more than that. And also from a self-interested point of view, I was kind of starting my production journey at the same time. So a lot of it was also, okay, I love how this guy does his bass lines. Let me just like ask him my questions directly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there was a bit of that as well, but also it was kind of like, I'm sure there's a ton of people that are interested in the person behind the producer for like yeah. all these people I talked to. And that was kind of also the idea. It was, yeah, basically just copying what exists already in, a million other podcasts and doing it in drone base. But I think that's the magic of a podcast. That's the most interesting thing is like you've seen the art that this person creates and then all of a sudden you're hearing an interview that's longer than three minutes on a talk show or on yeah, a exactly. late night spot or something. You're actually hearing them think in real time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're like, oh, they're talking about way more interesting stuff than just their latest single and like buy it or being fed yeah. a line and making a funny joke. Yeah. Yeah. I hate regular people. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I I hate some like regular press, you know, just those generic questions that you have to answer mm. sometimes. Like I, I, I just find it, I don't know. I, I think podcasts are so much more engaging mm. and I love the fact that uh, there's more podcasts in the drum and bass world that are revealing this stuff because I mean, that's one of the reasons why we have guests on ours occasionally is because yeah. we're like, we know this guy or this girl is so funny and is so silly. And we want other people to hear how much of a laugh they are rather than just knowing them for their music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, man, I think, I think it's great. Do you, do you do you find having one that you're uh, I don't know do you do you walk away from every conversation I guess like having learnt 
you sound mm. like? In in some ways, definitely, yeah, because ninety nine percent of my guests, I've never spoken to them before, like yeah. beyond like the email exchanges that we have, because I'm still very new to the scene. So it's just me reaching out to people, and so I always learn something new about the people like themselves, which I always find interesting. I just love learning about what makes people tick and what makes them, yeah, what motivates them and all that. Uh, yeah, some some episodes I, I come out of them and I'm like, fuck, this was amazing. Like, this is why I do what I do. Like the the Woody episode we were talking about, that was one, mm. uh, one discussion where we stopped recording, came off Zoom, and I kind of took five minutes to myself to think about, like, that was, like, special. Like, that was that was great. And oh, good. obviously that doesn't happen all the time when you do it, like, weekly. Like, some episodes are more special than others. But, yeah, uh, yeah one every every few times like that just kind of keeps you going <laughs> yeah that's totally. awesome yeah but yeah i, think, I was uh, sorry go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. no i was just gonna say yeah sometimes with our podcasts you end re you finish recording and you're like that was a good one yeah and then, sometimes and then other times you're like we should one. delete that one and there's ones that we've recorded and they haven't come out mm. yeah because that, that's that just you know that's a you know, you think of someone sitting in a in a booth. You're all sitting in a booth, and you're listening to other people's conversations. And an interesting conversation is great to listen to. A boring conversation is like you're like, I just need to get out of this position. <laughs> and sometimes we've had those conversations. You're like, yeah, I would I wouldn't want to subject anyone to that forty minutes of conversation. It was a chore mm. to have. Yeah, it will be a chore <laughs> to listen. Yeah, it to. is a chore. It's a chore to have. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah but that's sometimes in the in the eyes of the or the ears of the the listener you know like it's obviously if it's like pure rubbish or whatever and you were hung over or whatever and that's different but i don't know i feel it's maybe different with having guests because there's always going to be a handful of persons of people that are going to be interested in just hearing even yep. standard press questions about their latest yeah. single or whatever so yeah that's true that's a bit very true. different, yeah. But yeah, uh, just on the note of having guests, <clears throat> I do think you should have guests more often because the discussion you had with Chuck one was like amazing. Like that one was, that 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 that's one where I imagine you came out of it like that was a special discussion because there were so yeah, many yeah. great insights and stuff in there. Like I I just loved it. <laughs> oh, thanks. He's um. Yeah, it's it's really great having him downstairs, and as we, I think as we say at the start of the podcast, we often have these conversations and we just don't record them, mm. Right? Mm. and then we're like, ah, oh, we should we should record this, and not saying that we're some sort of sage wise people, but we do just end up talking about kind of interesting things that we think, yeah, you know, other people might be interested. In. Yeah, yeah. Which was pretty much how this discussion went, and I really yeah. loved it. So. Thanks a lot for your time, so guys. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank me. you so much for having us. Um, before we shut off, uh, we haven't really spoken about <laughs> your music or any <laughs> press topics. So any upcoming music you have, upcoming shows, festivals that you, you want to plug, anything at all? Um, well, I think... Yes. Yeah. Uh, by, by now, uh, our remix of DoD... Uh, DOD's Still Sleepless will be out. That's featuring Carla Malone. It's been a big tune in the house world and uh, we got the opportunity to remix it. So that will be out. Um, and we have an upcoming tune on Night Mode. Which will come out uh, at the end of March. Yeah, yeah that's a collaboration. Collab yeah. With a Perth guy called Twirl. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, follow and us on... So, uh, that, how much can we say <laughs> smash the like button uh but yeah like fo follow us on socials echo on sidetrack instagram twitter facebook keep yeah. up to date we will we will i mean we don't love using it but we will be posting a lot more regularly than we were in the past 20 days so and i think yeah we, i don't mind using it it's just using it in uh moderation yeah and understand yeah by it. yeah Mm. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of planned music to come out this year and hopefully we can also head up to Europe 
uh, mm. for summer as well and play some festivals. Yeah. Are you are you guys playing liquidity or not? Yes. I hope so. Let's uh We are. Let's um <laughs> let's Yeah. Well it's it's funny because we've had a few um bookings come up again recently that were like, Hey, remember we booked you in twenty twenty? Yeah, and that, that lineups just kept rolling. Like, Exa- we'd exactly. love to have you in twenty two. Because so, I think Liquidity just posted like yesterday or two days ago, like the the dates for the twenty twenty two festival, which was the twenty twenty one. I think that was just moved. Yeah. So this is like yeah. the third time, uh, where third I, time ha- I I have my tickets for for it since twenty twenty. I think so. I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know how much the lineup is changing or whatever. But uh, so you guys should be playing oh. there. Yeah, yeah, we hope to be playing there. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. We will. All right. Well, yeah, best of luck with, with the shows. I'm not sure what the situation is in, in Australia at the moment, but yeah, Europe is is really opening up at the moment. So uh, best of luck with all the shows. And also you didn't plug, but YouTube, like your podcast is on YouTube as well. So if people want to yes. check out the video format of your your podcast. Yeah. Uh, yes. And if they haven't, check out the, the one with Chuck one, because I think that's a great encapsulation of the topics you like to talk about so it gives a great idea of what you guys are about but yeah thanks a lot for your time guys and uh all the best in the future thanks for having us dude